The Thing, based on the 1938 novel Who Goes There by John W. Campbell and directed by John Carpenter, is a 1982 sci-fi horror film that takes place in the Antarctic where a crew of scientists conducting research are disturbed at their camp. They encounter a mysterious and violent creature that seeks to assimilate the crew and inhabit their bodies at the same time so it can not only survive but also live in secret. As the crew begins to distrust one another, their goal becomes to simply survive this crazy situation in the most brutal of elements. Alright, so The Thing is a film that my brother has been trying to get me to watch for seemingly forever. He's brought it up a ton of times and I've just kind of been like, you know, yeah, alright, I'll watch it at some point. Well, the other night, he finally convinced me and I was like, yeah, alright, let's watch The Thing, whatever. And if you haven't seen it yet, let me just tell you guys, this movie is wild. It's insane, really. I was actually impressed, though, because what The Thing has to offer was pretty good based upon the time it was produced and how it holds up now. I kind of half expected it to be this sort of campy, low-budget 80s horror flick that was ultimately fun, but not all that well made. But I was pleasantly surprised to find a film that was as intriguing as it was scary. The intrigue comes from the premise that John Carpenter does a great job of playing to the strengths of. This is a lot like a trapped in space type of film like Alien where a crew of workers are trapped in a confined location and they're being hunted by this mysterious alien creature, except this time the crew is trapped in the middle of the Antarctic instead of space. The main difference with the thing though is that you have no idea where the monster is or even if it's around most of the time because it assimilates other living things seamlessly. It's not like a xenomorph that just shows up and wreaks havoc every now and then when the pace dictates that it does. The thing could be working in evil ways, mysterious ways, in almost every scene and it'd be difficult to know for sure. The ambiguity in that intrigue helps separate the thing from a lot of other horror movies I've seen because it just demands a higher level of engagement, a higher level of active participation to figure out what's actually going on from scene to scene. Like I mentioned though, the thing is actually pretty damn scary. What they do with the practical effects in this film is pretty remarkable when you consider that it came out in the early 80s. I was definitely impressed by John Carpenter's willingness to do things as practically as possible and not rely too heavily on CGI and digital effects to do the heavy lifting. There's a lot of imagery in this film that does a great job of being truly terrifying while also looking practical rather than overly computerized. I always respect when a film places a heavy emphasis on practical effects because it just shows a willingness to make the horror aspects look and feel vivid. The thing has its moments where it looks and feels a little dated, sure, but I definitely felt like the practical effects did a good job immersing me into the scarier aspects of the story, while also just simply scaring me and keeping me on the edge of my seat consistently. The performances are also good. Kurt Russell leads the way here as Mac Ready, or Mac for short, and he does a great job at being the leader that takes charge when things get complicated, and trust me, they get complicated pretty quickly. He plays a character that's pretty typical of a leading character in this type of film, strong, capable, in command during the most difficult and complicated times that the crew face. There's a lot of solid performances in this film, and they're often more interesting than they otherwise would be because from scene to scene you have no idea if that character is now an imitation of themselves controlled by the thing. It's interesting to watch the little subtleties and changes in the character's mannerisms from scene to scene because it might indicate their human status one way or another, and it kind of leaves a lot of room for interpretation. The intrigue comes from honestly not knowing what the hell is lying underneath, and also that makes the film feel pretty tense too. I mentioned ambiguity earlier, and I think part of what makes the film such a clever horror experience, and a very interesting one at the very least, is that it pretty much refuses to give you concrete answers as to whether or not various crew members have been assimilated or not. You of course know the answers about some of them as things start going crazy, but you're not always going to get answers as to whether or not certain crew members are actually themselves or not, and that kind of makes it interesting at the very least. These type of films are awesome to watch because they leave room for a ton of interpretation. They leave room for speculation and theorizing as to what actually is going on underneath the context of a given interaction or a given scene. There's so much to digest here simply due to the very nature of the thing and what it actually seeks to do. Entire scenes could be interpreted very differently if you simply view characters in a different light, and that requires those higher levels of attention to detail, which I think is great with a film like this. The ending also fits that bill of that ambiguity extremely well. I loved it because it leaves so much room for interpretation. I've mentioned in a lot of my reviews that ambiguous endings like this can be very hit or miss for me, and I think that mostly depends on the context in which the ending exists. That's how I judge them. If the rest of the film is ambiguous and as and you know the ending sort of plays to that style, I usually don't have a problem with that type of ending. But it always is a case by case basis that I judge it on. Here it absolutely works because I don't think we need a clear answer. I'd rather come up with my own theory about what's going on because you know it's a little bit more interesting and I just kind of like piecing the clues together based on what's kind of been presented to me throughout the film. There's so much engagement to be found with this film is my point, and I love that, and the ending fits that. Ultimately, The Thing is a sci-fi horror classic for a reason, and if you hadn't had a chance to go watch it yet, I definitely recommend you go give it a shot if you like horror films. 
It's got all the things to help establish a film as a classic in the genres it plays to. And that's all you can really ask for. As for the pros cons, for the pros, I thought the thing delivered a tense and gripping sci-fi horror experience with lots of awesome practical effects, an engaging premise and execution, tons of ambiguity that leaves room for viewer interpretation, and an awesome ending that perfectly aligns with the tone of the rest of the film. As for the cons, there honestly isn't anything I didn't like about this film. I'm gonna give the thing a 10 out of 10 and definitely recommend you check it out if you're into classic horror films. It's well worth a watch and should satisfy those of you out there that are looking for a more engaging horror experience, especially those of you that like sci-fi too. So have you guys seen the thing before? What did you think of it? And if not, let me know why not. And also let me know your favorite horror film from the 80s or 90s. For me, probably The Shining, but I'm interested to hear your guys' thoughts. Either way, this is Wolfoxification signing off. See you in the next review.